Welcome back to part two of Ajaxifying Your Forms. A couple things I forgot in the first uh, introduction video um, was in addition to ensuring we have our name attribute in our form field so that this data we can send to the server, we need to give them also an ID so that we can target them with jQuery. So make sure you have an ID for your form fields as well. Um, otherwise we can't can't select them uh, <clears throat> with jQuery also wanted to uh, just take a look at the project folder if you're following along I've kept mine real simple it's just everything's in the root directory uh, the images I'm going to use um, a style sheet our JavaScript sheet that we're going to put in here and then our uh, PHP script is all going to be in the root folder so we don't have to worry about transversing up and down directory subdirectory blah 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 everything will be just a direct link um, and really this, none of this well some of it will matter but I'm also as we're building this and testing um, I'm building here local on my local machine I know you can see I've got it in my HT docs folder um, but the demo is working on a live server. I don't think I used any functions in the PHP uh, that are specific to any one version of PHP. Um, you know, I've just started using PHP in the past in the past couple months. So maybe some of you guys that are more experienced with it can let me know if there's a problem. But uh, I think I'm running 5.3, 5.3 on my server, and I don't have any problems with it. So. We'll just uh, go from there and maybe adjust accordingly. If you guys have any problems, leave comments or whatnot. Um, okay, so anyway, now we got through all that. And I'm probably going to have to break this into probably four videos. I think the jQuery is going to take us a little bit longer than, than this one video. Plus, I've just been babbling on now for a couple of minutes about uh, some gibberish. So, we've got our form built. We've got our name attributes, we've got our IDs, we're ready to go. Come on, Worm, let's add some functionality to this. So let's just go back and take a look. This is what we have. We've got our form with a box here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get jQuery, the library, into our form. So to do that, uh, we're going to go over here to Google Libraries, uh, and we're going to we're going to include jQuery from Google CND, CDN Network. Um, I do this for a couple reasons. One, their network is way faster than your server is going to be. And two, you take advantage of their geolocation awareness. So, and three, likely that your visitors have been to another website that have already included this. And so this will be cached in their browser and they won't have to download it again. It's just easier than hosting it yourself. So we're going to copy this path right here. Copy. Jump back into Dreamweaver. And I'm going to stick this right before the closing body tag. I'm going to insert HTML, script objects, and a script tag. And let's paste this in for the source right there. Hit OK. There it is. So now we have the jQuery library included in our project. So let's Let's save that and let's also create a new JavaScript file. So file new uh, JavaScript create and we're just going to get rid of that. Now let's save this. Save as, let me make sure I'm in the right directory here. Uh, Ajax form. Alright, let's save this as Ajax submit .js alright now we need to include this file as well in here so let's right underneath where we've included jQuery let's insert HTML script object script and let's go find that file we just saved which is right here hit okay okay 
Bam. Now we got it. Of course, there's nothing there. But let's say for the first order of business, let's get rid of this box. So that it doesn't show until we need it to show. So to do that, let's jump into our Ajax file. And we'll start off with our document dot ready function. Not ready. So that let's see here, let's close that off. Closing brace, parentheses, semicolon. Alright. So we don't want anything to happen until the document's been loaded. After it's been loaded, then we'll, we can do some things. So the first order of business is to grab our form. So jQuery. And if you don't know, the dollar sign is just the short for jQuery. You could also write it like this. But I use the dollar sign. It's quicker. Dollar sign, jQuery. Let's say we want, and I'm going to target these specifically. So form jQuery our form and our div in our form that we want to hide is has an ID of response so and then we will use the hide function let's save that and see if it worked save uh, we also need to save our uh, form uh, file where we added this this to it so file save Let's go in here to Internet Explorer, refresh the page, and it should be gone. Look at that. It's, it's gone. It's no longer there. So, what's the next order of business? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to prevent the form from being submitted until we've run our validation. So, I'm just going to close this because we have it linked here now. Well, we did. Let's see here. It should have been in here. Alright, not sure what happened there. I just closed the file and reopened it because we should have had it linked here just like we had our style sheet. But it wasn't. So, back to the task at hand. So we need to prevent the form from having its default action of feedback.php being posted to the server. So, after we've hidden... I'm just going to put some space in here so we can see everything real good. After we've hidden our response div, we're going to target our submit button. So jQuery, the element with the ID of submit, we want on the click. When it's clicked, we're going to use an anonymous function and we're going to pass a parameter or an argument of E which is going to stand for error and opening brace couple, skip a couple lines closing brace closing parentheses and semicolon now I hate the way Dreamweaver indents but we're going to fix that okay now now we're inside of our click function when the submit button is clicked what do we want to happen well we want the form to not be submitted by default so we'll say e which is the parameter we're passing to our anonymous function dot prevent d oops d fault yeah e dot prevent default function and that should prevent our form for being submitted by default so until we tell it to submit it so save that let's go check it out make sure it's working refresh the page all right and we click submit and nothing happens perfect all right now we've got our submit button targeted we've got the form from Submitting until we tell it to what next well, let's validate our fields So we're going to set up a couple variables here 
uh, let's see, variable valid, we're going to make equal to blank, and that's going to, valid is going to hold uh, our error messages. So if valid is, is uh, blank, then we know everything's good and we can submit our form. If it has something, we're going to show those messages to the user. So let's see here. Let's add a variable of required to hold our message. We'll just, we could hard code this and it would have been just as easy because there's not much here, but if you got a bunch more form fields, then we'll just store this message in here and we can tack this on to whatever we're doing. So uh, we're going to make this equal to space is required. And let's see here. Now, let's start getting the values from our form. So variable name is going to be equal to, uh, let's see here, jQuery. Oh, it's not jQuery. jQuery. Uh, form pound name, which is within the form element, the element with the ID of name dot value. And we'll store that in the name variable. Let's do that for our email as well. And that's going to be form pound email dot value. And another variable that's going to be message. And it's going to be uh, the form pound message. Alright, dot value. And then the variable for our hidden form fields that we're using to keep spam out. The first one's going to be honeypot. Honeypot is equal to jQuery uh, form pound honeypot. Dot value. Alright, and our last one is going to be our human check and this is probably a bit redundant probably don't even need it but it's been working pretty successfully for me so we'll just stay with what has been working human check oh forgot the closing parenthesis dot value all right so we've stored we're telling jquery to grab all these elements with these ids get the value of them and store them in these variables that we just created great now let's do some error checking. So the first one we want to check is if the name field is, is filled out. So let's go uh, if, oops, if name variable is equal to blank or, which is the pipe symbol, uh, right above your enter key, shift and the straight up and down thing. That's called the pipe symbol. So if name is blank or name dot length is let's say less than or equal to oops equal to two, let's opening brace, couple lines, close the brace. Let's say our variable of valid, which currently doesn't have anything stored in it is going to be equal to let's opening paragraph tag your name uh, close that off plus our variable required plus we've got to close our tag off so closing p tag oops I need a single quote here single quote Oops, single quote. And there we go. So if the name is empty or the length of the name is less than two, then our valid variable is going to be equal to your name plus required, which is is required. So your name, whatever's in the field. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Your name plus is required. Great. So we're done there. The name is done. So we're going really long. This is probably going to be three parts because there's a lot to this jQuery. So stay tuned for the next lesson.